What's going on my friends? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I recently started working on a new car audio install in a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now this install is going to feature three different amplifiers and a separate digital signal processor, which means I have a lot of wiring that I need to do. So how can we plan for the wiring stage of an install and how do we determine what we need? I'm gonna be taking you guys along for the ride as I do so on this project. I've got an iPad here. You don't need an iPad. You can do this with pencil and paper, but that way you guys can follow along and see See what I'm doing. Let's get on into it. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna hop into this app that I like to use. This is called Notability. There's a million different apps out there that you could use. I like using this one. The reason that I like to use something like an iPad is it makes it really easy to be more visual. In this example, you can see that I have a browser on the side here and I can pull in my different amplifiers. I'm gonna be using the LC-6.1200. What I'm able to do is I can bring this picture open and I can actually click and just drag it right in to this application. And this is just gonna make things a little bit more visual and easy to understand. All right, so I've got all the amplifiers added in here. The next thing that I need to add is I also have to bring in my digital signal processor. This is going to control the signal that comes from the vehicle, turn it into RCA outputs for the different amplifiers. So we've got that in there. Now I'm going to add some generic things into this drawing as well. I'm going to start with adding a battery. For the battery, we're just gonna use our stylus, a pen tool, and we're actually going to just draw it in like so. And we're going to label one side as being the ground or the negative. And then we're going to change colors here and we're going to label the other side as the positive lead. With our basic layout here, I'm going to move down the DSP just so it's a little bit out of the way for now but we can start actually drawing in our wires. So we know that we're going to come out of the battery and then of course we need a fuse. So I'm gonna leave a space there and then we will come out of the fuse and we're gonna go down and I need to somehow divide this wire up so we're gonna have a distribution block. So I'm gonna leave another space there and then out of the distribution block, we're going to go into each of the three different amplifiers with our power. Now, don't forget that we also have things like the DSP. We might also have some lights, some other stuff. So I want a power feed for that stuff as well. In order to have a power feed for those, we're going to have another wire coming out of our distribution block that's going to go over here. And I'm gonna leave a space in that location right here. I'm gonna leave that space for a smaller fuse distribution block. Now we also need to connect the negative or the ground wire for each of these amplifiers and devices. So let's say that we have a separate large ground distribution block in this area right here. So we're gonna come out of that amplifier and go to it. We'll come out of this amplifier and go to it. And then finally we'll come out of this amplifier and go to it. So up until now, we've just been leaving spaces for the distribution blocks and fuses and the different things that we're gonna use. Let's actually pick some out and get them added in. So I am here on the new concept site right now. Oh, check that out, Car Audio Fabrication Review right there on a previous video. But we're going to go to fuse blocks. Now we're gonna get down into the details and determine what size each of these wires needs to be. But obviously we're gonna be using a large wire in this location here, feeding our amplifiers and our main inline fuse block. So let's go to inline fuse holders here. I know that I need a zero gauge in line. We don't need anything crazy. Let's go with this guy right here, the basic zero gauge ANL inline fuse holder. So here we have it right here. We will click and we will drag and drop it in. We'll resize it a little bit. So the next thing we need is a distribution block. A distribution block goes from one wire in to multiple different wires out. And I've already kind of looked and I know that I want a four way because I have four different wires coming out here. So I'm going to go with this guy right here, this four-way distribution block. And this is what's nice about working on an iPad. I can actually easily zoom into things if I need to, just to get a little bit more resolution out of the screen. So now that I have the positive distribution block in here, we need to also have a negative distribution block in this location. Here's a negative distribution block right here. They call it a six-way ground block. So we'll open that up and click and drag it in as well. Finally, for all the small stuff that I'm gonna to add to this install, including the DSP, I'm gonna be using this Blue Sea Systems split fuse block. This is a nice small fuse block that I can use for the smaller pieces of equipment. If you guys wanna see a review video that I did on that, you can check it out up in the corner of the screen. So let's draw in a couple more details here. I know that of course, 
there's going to be a ground coming off this smaller fuse block. I have the positive going into that one part there, but I'm also going to have a relay that will allow me to have a switched side since this is two different parts of the distribution block. So the relay will run to that side and it'll be fed from power off a of fuse here. So that way I'll have a constant that's always coming off the top that can feed my DSP, but I'm also going to have a switched source that will come off of that as well and tell the DSP to turn on and off. We can also have the DSP connect to the ground side. So now we get to the fun part. Now we need to start doing some calculations. I need to determine the total system power, what wire size we're going to be using, and get an idea how much total current the vehicle is going to need to be able to provide. Before we get into those steps though, I do want to take a quick second to say thank you to our new monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. As you can see here on the New Concepts website, they offer amplifier kits, battery terminals, fuse blocks, all sorts of different stuff. But one of the things I want to focus on right now that we're going to be talking about in this video is power wire. For this particular project, I plan to use this stuff right here. This is the Colossus Flex cable, which is an oxygen-free copper cable, which as you can see on the screen here is a high strand count, 99.99% purity tinned oxygen-free copper cable. This is the real deal. You can see that they actually have four aught gauge, they have zero gauge, four gauge, eight gauge, so tons of different options here. And the other thing is awesome that they have these options here for the candy colors. You you can see this light blue, this like lime green, neon orange, and purple, tons of different options for color coding or matching your install. To learn more about the Colossus wire and new concepts, you can check out the link down in the video description. The first step of our calculations here is we need to determine how much actual amplifier power we're going to be using. Let's start with taking a look at this amplifier here, the LC-6.1200. I'm gonna pull up the specs for this amplifier on the left side of the screen here. Now, although this amplifier has the capability of being wired down to a 2 ohm load and therefore providing 200 watts per channel, I'm only going to be using a 4 ohm load on each of the channels. It's only going to be 6 times 125 watts or 750. For the small micro amplifier, it's the same case. I'm gonna be using four times 50 watts. So in other words, 200 watts total. Finally, for the subwoofer, I'll be using the two ohm load. So the full power of this amplifier, one times 800 watts, which equals obviously 800. So for our total system power, we're going to have 200 plus 750 plus 800, which equals 1750. So we know that we have 1750 watts of total system power that we're going to be using. So I need to provide that full amount of current through this wire in this location here. So we're gonna start with sizing that main power feed. Now keep in mind that whatever size the main power lead is in this location here, that will also need to be the same size wire in this location for our main ground. So now we need to calculate our current. To get our current I, we're going to divide power by the system voltage. So to get current, we're going to have 1750 divided by, if the vehicle is off, we'll call it 12.8 volts. This equals approximately 137 amps. That means that these amplifiers would pull 137 amps of current if they were 100% efficient, and that's of course at full volume. Now obviously amplifiers aren't 100% efficient. We lose some of that efficiency. So these amplifiers are all D-class amplifiers. Let's just take an estimate and say that they're about 80% efficient. If we take 137 amps and divide by the fact that they're 80% efficient, we will get the fact that they're going to need about 171 amps of current. So what does this all mean? Well, this is kind of the worst case scenario of how much current we could possibly be pulling from our system. Now here's what's interesting. I actually looked up the rating of the stock alternator on this vehicle and found that it had a rating of only 160 amps. Now if worst case scenario, I need 171 amps, how could I ever possibly have enough with only having 160 amps from the alternator. That 171 value that we came up with, that is if we are absolutely playing your system to the absolute max volume. And I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, oh man, Mark, I wanna play my system to the max volume. What I mean by the absolute max output is if you were cranking a like 
40 hertz test tone through the subwoofer amplifier and then something like a thousand hertz test tone simultaneously through the other amplifiers if you are absolutely just blasting a sine wave that would be the only time that you would ever possibly pull this much current from the system. The point I'm trying to get at here is if you're creating a competition sound system where the only thing you're ever going to do is just play one note, one sine wave frequency, then yes, obviously you need to upgrade the stock alternator. But for 99.9% .9 of the systems out there, you're not interested in just playing a sine wave. You wanna play music. And even if you're somebody that really, really loves bass, you're only pulling that max amount of bass from the subwoofer amplifier, You're not pulling all that max current from your total system at all times. So here's the deal. So we are gonna use that 171 amps value. We're going to use that to determine our wire size. As you can see on the chart on the left side of the screen here, if I go to the zero gauge size for this Colossus wire, I can see that here, 375 amps, it can handle that much current, the max load at 20 feet. So that is what I'm going to wanna to use because 150 amps is too small at the four gauge. So back on my chart here, I know that this wire here, that's going to be zero gauge, that's going to be zero gauge. And then if you did that same formula as before, you would find that each of them is under 150 amps. So we could use four gauge here, here, here. I'm gonna use four gauge there, even though it's gonna be plenty large enough. We'll use zero gauge, of course, here, because it matches that. And then these will all be four gauge as well. So we use that 170 amp value to determine our max wire size, right? But how can we use that value to determine what we will actually be using and if our stock alternator is large enough? Well, unfortunately, without doing a ton of testing and basically always listening to the exact same music, there's no clear cut answer for this. What you have to understand about music and what's honestly pretty obvious is that the volume is constantly changing. So we're gonna have different power requirements at different times during the song. So what this means is the power requirement is going to be different from song to song, and it's also going to be very different from listener to listener. If I'm the type of guy that's listening to rock music, but I'm listening to it at normal, moderate volume all the time, my power requirements are a lot different than somebody that is just absolutely cranking the system all the time and only listening to rap where honestly the bass line a lot of the times is much like a sine wave. So this is just my opinion. This is not an exact science. And again, there's no way to having an exact answer for this unless you're literally going to take every single song and figure out what kind of power requirement that song has. This is just my approximation. If you are a bass heavy, Listener, you are going to use a value of 50% for the equation that I'm about to show you. And then we have more of the average listener. In my opinion, the average listener is somebody that likes to crank it up from time to time and enjoy it. But for the most part, they're just gonna be driving around kind of listening to everything at a moderate volume and they have a wide range of musical interests. For this average listener, I'm gonna use a value of 25%. So to come up with an approximation of how much current you're actually going to be using, you're gonna take this value here and multiply it by whatever factor you're going to use. So in my approximation here, a bass heavy listener will use about 86 amps and an average listener will use about 43 amps. So if you are a bass heavy listener, you know what? You're probably going to have to consider upgrading that stock alternator. But if you're an average listener, you're probably gonna get by with that honestly quite large 160 amp stock alternator. Again, it really boils down to the stock alternator size in your vehicle as it changes from small vehicle to large vehicle and what type of listener you are. In this case, I should be good to go, but I did do a little bit of research and found that there is a 240 amp alternator available for this particular vehicle if need be. It would give me another nice 80 amps to work with, and again, that's why it's really critical. If you consider yourself a bass-heavy listener, you should definitely consider also upgrading the electrical system. So now that I've made a rough overview of my system electrical plan, I know what fuse blocks I need to get, distribution blocks, that kind of thing, along with what size wires I need to get. So now really the only thing I need to do is go on out to the vehicle and actually just take some measurements. That's easy enough. I just use a string and a tape measure to approximate the distances. 
If you are planning out a new system and you're in need of the electrical components, definitely check out newconcepts.com. And as always, a special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping with the making of these videos. You can check out a couple of my other videos here on screen. I really appreciate you guys being here and checking out these videos. As always, my friends, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.